Let's get you caught up on construction projects going on around the Disneyland Resort and more. Today we'll be talking about what that big blue rig means for the Haunted Mansion refurb, two projects that keep getting delayed, and updates from Tiana's Bayou Adventure, plus construction video from Walt Disney World and Epic Universe in Florida. This is going to be a lot of fun. And we're start on Main Street Disneyland. And why not? Because Main Street Disneyland is wonderful. They're updating City Hall these days. We've been tracking this project for a little while. Still, obviously, a lot of scaffolding up in front of the structure. And we've noted that they're working on the, the veneer, the, the faux brick veneer on those facades, plus the windows they are getting updated here. And I want to say some of that, you know, the, the trim around the buildings is getting either new paint or they're actually replacing the wood trim around the facades and on the sides of the building. I've seen them taking things off and putting them back on. Here's one of the boarded up windows. And you can see again from last week how some of those bricks are a little darker. That's actually new brick. Well, not actual brick, it's, it's faux brick, but <laughs> that's new. Plus they're gonna be updating the veneer. We're gonna check on the uh, fire engine here in a minute to show you what that's gonna look like when it's done. On the left side of City Hall, we observed last week that there was some trim missing or had, that had been taken off of that area. You can see this guy right now. He's actually working on that as we speak. By this time next week, I expect that area will be finished or near finished. But I'm really looking forward to seeing this done. They're going to make City Hall look like new, which is delightful. <laughs> the same way that I've been delighted over the Mark Twain, which again, we're going to be talking about that in a minute. But uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this looks and how these colors and all that brickwork pop. There is a completed version of what we saw. Last week, it was, it was that sort of gray layer that they had put on the fire department out in front. And now they look brand new. That's what we have to look forward to. And it looks, it looks really, really good, in my opinion. We're also going to be watching to see if they do anything with that bell at the top of that building Hopefully we get an update on that as well. Similar work is happening at the Stage Door Cafe. We had scrim and scaffold up last week. That is still going on. The scrim is down, but the scaffolding is still up. From this side, we're able to see just what it is that they're working on. There's those gray areas there. It looks like what they're doing is patching up some of the imperfections. Maybe some cracks or something to that effect. A lot of it actually throughout this building. And then they'll probably paint over the top of that and make everything look fresh and new. If you look here at these windows you can see more of that trim that's that's actually not faded i think that they have they have buffed that down in order to get it ready for a new coat of paint as well next let's get on that raft to tom sawyer island stop over there at lafitte's tavern and see what we can find what's new at the haunted mansion actually before we go to lafitte's tavern let's go to the treehouse there again you see right there in the right third of frame that's the entrance to the exterior queue same red arrow there on that column indicating that they've got something planned for that column it may be evolving although all that brickwork has survived so far note the location of that giant blue rig we're going to talk about that here in just a second but note the location of that machine this though is interesting that's an excavator I think but that's in the that's in the front queue where the fake grass is where I guess first when you first enter and cross the threshold that rig is actually standing about where that fake grass is there's the pet cemetery behind that green scrim so this project is extending out into the the front area these guys right here these construction workers oh that looks like some trim or some molding they're right there at the entrance that guy's going to pass right in front of the entrance right there to the mansion. And there's some red tape up there in front of the mansion. They are busy, not just in the rear, but in the front part of that queue as well. What are they up to? I do wonder. This is the courtyard, Magnolia Gardens, where the fountain used to be. Although I'm not sure if where the fountain was is in this frame. Got a little bobcat down there. He's digging stuff up still, I'm sure. But so far, all we're going to be able to observe at this point is the devastation, the, the demo of that area. We are a long way off from seeing things being built or installed, growing. Right now, we're still in the tearing down phase. We'll be for a little while, I think. 
So let's talk about that big blue rig. Do you, where that is now, you can see that big pile of dirt right there behind it. That's actually the, you know, where the tombstones are. But the fact that this piece of machinery is where it is tells you everything you need to know about the urgency of this project and why they're doing it, why they're even rebuilding this queue to begin with. This whole project is based on the fact that they have to update their compliance with ADA policy. But the state is saying, I'm sure, the time has come, you need to update your ADA access, you need to build an elevator for those ADA guests rather than the current setup where they go up the stretching room. In order to do that, you need that machine. That is my understanding, is that you need that machine in order for them to do what they need to do for the ADA access. The mere fact that they have to put that machine in this queue where it is, is the reason why they have to update the queue. Because in order to bring that machine in, you obviously are going to destroy. It's going to destroy that queue. Whether you want it to or not, it's gonna happen. It has to happen. So the elevator is requiring that rig. The rig destroys the queue in order to build the elevator. Therefore, they have to rebuild the queue. And at that point, now you're saying, now we, we might as well just make it something nice and call it new. We're gonna update and expand, etc., make it more guest friendly perhaps, or maybe add some capacity. Whatever the case may be, all of this starts with the elevator and that rig. <laughs> and it, it doesn't look pretty, I will admit. But at the end of all of this, we're going to have a very lovely, delightful queue. And I guess what I'm saying is that it's, I, don't, I don't believe that Disney desired to do this. They did not desire to upset that queue back there. They have to. And we'll try to take one more peek at the courtyard area from Lafitte's Tavern. Another little excavator there, I think. But little to be seen from this perspective. Yet. When we go vertical, then we can. For now, that's our boat. We need to catch that raft and head back to the mainland to check in on the gift shop. No movement whatsoever on the gift shop. It's everything is just <laughs> they haven't they haven't moved an inch on that project. And my guess is is that they're, they're probably building it whole off site. They're gonna it's like a kit. They're gonna they're gonna make a little mini house and then bring it in on a truck, I guess, and just drop it in there when they're done. I guess. While we were on that raft, by the way, let's talk again about the Mark Twain. We were today, but as you watch this, it was supposed to be open today, February 10th. It is now delayed again. This is now our second delay. Per the Disneyland website, we are now looking at February 24th as the first day that it'll be back online. Kind of a mystery because, I mean, by all observations, they look done. I have not seen any crew doing anything on this boat for at least a week now. All the doors and all the curtains and every, all the windows look to be done. It's bright, clean, and wonderful. So I'm not sure what the delay is, but it's a, it's now a two week delay, but yet there's nobody doing anything on the Twain. So stay tuned. We have another delay, the Astro Orbiter. We are now set for this to reopen on March 15th. And when this project first started, we were getting the vibe, we were getting a Finding Nemo vibe based on they were saying it was going to be a seasonal reopening, winter reopening. When does spring start? March 19th. So it's getting close. We're four days away from leaving winter and entering spring. So look for Astro Orbiter to come back on March 24th. Meanwhile, we had some slim hopes that they might restore the paint scheme. Or not restore it, but change the paint scheme. But it looks like as we watch these guys paint right now, we are getting the same paint scheme. Although it looks a little less gold. They're painting it yellow right now. They're, do, they're doing the yellow part of the satellite there. Uh, it looks like it's a little less bronze, a little more gold. I guess that's better? Question mark? But they got a whole crew working on that, cleaning up that satellite. I have not seen them work at all, now that I think about it, on the other satellites, the ones to the left. Those have been scrim and scaffold lists this whole time. By the way, there you can see, we didn't mention before, little spider legs have been attached to the main bearing there 
of the orbiter. So they, they're starting to put it back together, and obviously it's getting the same color scheme as before. Damn! <laughs> I guess we're stuck with the current paint scheme at the Astro Orbiter. I was so hoping. It was, it was a long shot, but I was still hoping. And there's the call. The call of the monorail. Beautiful. Woo! Here go we did. Let's check out Downtown Disney. Got some interesting updates for you here this week as well. They've taken the, the, the tarps off the, the construction site for the future of Parkside Market. There you can see some, you know, they got footings and, and, and foundations set up. They're, they're getting ready. They're about to go vertical here, which is exciting. And we're going to start to see this building take shape. It's going to have that, as you can see here, a sort of L-shaped construction to it. The bar is going to be on the second floor on that section back there. This section here along the walkway will be the Sip and Sonder location. I'm unable to identify from the concept art where G&G's chicken will be or Soul Sisters, most likely, obviously, in that building as well, but probably on the lower floor. I think the, uh, I think the second floor is going to be strictly the bar and the lower floor will be GG's and Soul Sisters. Stopped at the downtown Disney entrance from the parking lot and the sign is still up, but you can hear a lot of whooping and hollering down there. There is definitely crew back there working now. They were in the dirt phase not long ago. Let's take a peek through the scrim if we can. Yeah, and there you can see they, they put down the rebar. They're getting ready to pour concrete, put the new flooring down. Pretty wide area that they're updating there. That is super, super confusing because it seems to me like the time to take that sign down is while you're before you put in the, the new concrete. But they're getting they're putting in the new concrete down there. They've got they've got everything set up. Looks like they're very close to pouring it. That sign that tells me that sign is staying. Or at least at least it's foundation. Maybe they can just pop it out like a Lego piece and then install the new one on top of that. I'd be surprised if that sign survived. There's just no way. That sign screams, whatever, the 90s architecture and certainly not mid-century modern. It doesn't really drive at all with the concept art, so there's no way that sign survives. But that, I would have thought it'd be down by now. Let's check in on Din Tai Fung. Uh, we haven't been able to watch a lot of progress here because it's just basically been in steel phase, but now we're, we're seeing something appended to the rooftop there. That's new. Got some crew up there working on that. That's probably some themed elements for that structure, so that's nice to see. And we've got our first sign of sheathing. Walls are about to be constructed here uh, for the exterior of Din Tai Fung. That's also notable and visible progress, so this building will start to look like its future self in very short order, I believe. Just the way that the opposite building across the way with their breeze block facade that building is starting to take shape, although that's going to be considerably less ornate in design. It's pretty much a basic retail structure, box structure. We advised in our last update, this is where we believe the new Earl of Sandwich building is going to go. This is also going to be at least two stories, and it's going to go in that space in between the retail building and Din Tai Fung. You can see that green rig right there doing a little demo work probably. And as we pan right, there's a shade structure that's been in construction for a while. And it's going to go somewhere. It's going to land somewhere in that space. We heard them working, but I, I wasn't sure if it was on the Earl space or on the shade structure space. We got this footage. I had asked for some coverage from the Disneyland Hotel, and we got it. This is from Wyatt. Fresh Bake Street team, he got this from the Frontier Tower. And right away, this space, this little slice, it's very difficult to see. But you can see in the distance there, that's the retail building there. There's the shade structure that's right next to it. So it's this space right here that we're expecting the Earl of Sandwich building to be installed. There, matter of fact, yeah, there's the, there's the green rig that we saw from the ground. I shoot my video right on the other side of that wall right there. There's that green rig, so it hasn't moved. So it looks like they are, they are developing this site 
to some extent, though it's difficult to tell if it's, you know, at what stage it is in. So if you're in the Disneyland Hotel, that's where you need to be looking. Is that space right there. Can't wait to see how this goes. On our way out, I happen to notice some guys up there doing some perilous work on the Pixar Place Hotel. Scaffolding up on the side where they just installed that the new logo up there, but I believe that's like a side access to the rooms. Let's go to California Adventure. Checking in a couple of projects there. The scrim and scaffolding is down at the Hyperion Theater, revealing what I assume to be a brand new paint job. They have painted these stairs. And then we'll come back here and see that they have painted. We got a new paint on the facade, a new paint you know, on the steel, that blue paint. Over at Grizzly Peak in Grizzly River Run. Walls are still up, obviously. This thing is going to be down for a little while. I was advised that the wheel at Grizzly River Run is, in fact, new. That's a brand new wheel. Good for you, Disney. Good for you, Grizzly River Run. Get a new wheel. Awesome. Here's a look at the turntable, the guest loading area. And this week, we will see if we can find anything through the cracks of the, of, the, of the wall there. And we have, in fact, found again, just like at Downtown Disney. There we go. They got some rebar down. They are doing new concrete out here. This is about where the lockers are. It's a viewing area as the guests make that final trip around after making the last drop. So we're getting new concrete there. This is about, this is that last turn as you head, I guess, left. If you're in the raft, you head left and heading back towards this, uh, the, the structure. And that space up there is where the geyser will be that they're going to be repairing. Take a quick look at Grizzly Peak Airfield where scrim and scaff or scaffolding is still up. The scrim is down. And it looks like we're getting new paint, for one thing, here at the Welcome Camper sign. But other than that, little to observe. Let's go back to Disneyland. We haven't even looked at Tiana's yet. <laughs> so let's get to the Adventureland Treehouse. We'll climb the treehouse and see what we can see. Just head up these stairs. Oh, wait, no. We cannot head up those stairs. That is exit only. Exit only, guys. We've got to go up the stairs this way. That's right. <laughs> we, I had an exchange with Dallin from offhand. How uh, that triggers both of us people going the wrong way on that treehouse. Last week we saw the crew there at the top part, the Broccoli Crown section. They have moved down a level. But they have, I, I believe that they're still continuing that process of adding what I think is the final layer. This is the final layer where they're going to add the texture and color. But there's, obviously you can see that the, the mountain is in different stages. Yeah, he's applying some right there. Let's actually take a look from Pirate's Lair at Tom Sawyer Island, where we can see that they have got a large section of this workspace covered in a giant plastic tarp. Something significant, I'm hoping. But I don't recall there being anything very substantial there the last time we were here. Like last week, we saw that red tarp there, which is there now still, but nothing behind it. So what have they brought in in that time, in that week's time? I don't know. But that's interesting. There's that red tarp. Back on the ground, this is shot from the Haunted Mansion of thereabouts, and that's a new development right there. That white tarp. This is the lift hill, the barn-like structure. Uh, that you go up on the lift hill before you, you know, the first or the second lift hill. And that rig is there. That's new in that spot, in that place. It's some kind of hoist. So they're up to something there. And that rig actually connects a little bit to the barn structure. So there's that white tarp and the orange apparatus. It, I mean, it almost looks like it's attached to the barn. Interesting. I think I would have liked to have seen them doing something here on this moment to, to find out what the, the purpose is of this apparatus, of that rig, you know, what it's for. But it's usually the case when watching construction that you have to be waiting around for a little while to catch them 
actually doing the thing. Came around the other side. It looks like the crew left the mountain. Oh, I think I found them. Turned around, and there's a guy actually. They've climbed into the holes that they've, they've cut out of the side of the track there. So now we know why they need those holes, so that they can get in there. Well, I mean, we knew that already, but it's interesting to watch somebody actually... I was just asking, hey, let's do something, and there you go. Crew actually doing something on the side of the track there. That's cool. And just the second before I turned the camera on here, I heard, some, I heard them fire something up down there on the ground. You can see all that smoke coming out of there. That's from whatever machine they fired up. I'm not sure what they're doing. I would like to see, so we're going to try to get on the Disneyland Railroad. Unfortunately, we can't get there from New Orleans Square. They've closed the you know, New Orleans Square station while they're doing the refurb for the queue for the Haunted Mansion. While I was there, I observed that there's still no progress on that structure, still in its same state. So I got on the train at Toontown, came all the way around, and we're stopped here now at New Orleans Square before we head towards Splash Mountain. Saw the concept art there. Here's another look at the train station. We'll be waiting. Nothing to see from the train though, guys, just, just walls. So unfortunately, you know, we can see rigs probably over the top of that, but we can't see any kind of construction from the train. But let's see if we can figure out what those guys were up to down there, and I can't tell. They are busy doing something. That is, oh my, that is bags and just a ton of bags of something down there. What are they up to there? I don't know, but that's a lot of staging. Just a couple weeks ago when we were here, there was hardly anything on the ground there. So they are about to do something significant. And by the way, this area where they're at is going to be home to new... They're building new queue in that space, new switchbacks. They're taking over the space where the fast pass station was. And they're going to be putting in new switchbacks in that area. But what, what they're doing here has to do with that, hard to say. But that's... I mean, what... That's a lot of material down there. May or may not be for the, you know, that area specifically. It could be staging for some other part of the mountain, hill, salt mine. But yeah, they're very busy down there. Looking at the front, the entrance area that is behind Scrim and Scaffold, as is the rear of the mountain hill salt mine. Take a look at the Slip and Falls track. I was advised that those pieces of wood that we saw, you know, extending out from the steel is temporary and that is in fact to hold up the tarp, which makes sense. So while we're still in our rainy conditions, those will be in place, but we'll see if they remove them, which they probably will. They'll remove them when, you know, the weather clears up and then we'll know again, you know, what's the future of this part of the attraction? So far in our watching this construction happen, that is the most interesting, fascinating aspect of the evolution to Tiana's is what they're doing at Slip and Falls. And then one last stop at the Disneyland Resort, Fantasyland Theater, Tale of the Lion King. They have taken down the stage elements, so that is completely bare now. Now we're just waiting for anything to happen here at the Fantasyland Theater. With that, let's go to Florida. Walt Disney World, Epcot Center. These images courtesy of Sean. Thank you very much, Sean, great stuff. You can find Sean at Adventureland underscore dad. And this is wonderful. I love the fact that they are borrowing, I don't know if that's the right word or not, but they're using the same design, thematic design that they are for Spaceship Earth for this project. I, I think it's great. I, I would, that design is really, really cool to me. It's very interesting to me. It's, it's, it is Epcot in my opinion. So I would like to see more of that. There's that structure that I was talking about last week that I wanted to see what that would be like. That sort of, where they cross, they connect two buildings there. Is that like a viewing area? Are you able to see anything from there? Are they going to do show here? Wouldn't that be neat? Doubtful, but 
I mean, that's kind of cool. But it's probably just a way to connect those two buildings. I believe we're going to be driving by once more on the monorail, so we'll get a longer look at that again. I do not know where this is. I'm going to need somebody to tell me what that is and where it is. There we go. Let's get on that monorail. Admire Spaceship Earth. And then head around the corner. Alright, here we go. Here's a longer shot from the shots that Sean got from the ground before. And again, I'm really digging that texture, that design there on that building fa facades. Really curious to see how that place evolves, how that area devol or evolves. And there you can see more of those. Yeah, there they are. That's what we were seeing from the ground before. Cool. All right, so that's Epcot. Let's go check out the Polynesian. Hopefully it don't bum you guys out. I, I've been hearing more comments as I talk about this. I'm getting more and more commentary from guests who, you know, who watch our show, but who also go to Walt Disney World. And it's pretty unanimous that people are not happy about the Polynesian, which, I mean, I, I'm, I'm more willing to be patient, I guess, because I have no, I haven't even seen concept art. Is there concept art? Yes, it does look like there is. And it certainly in this image, it has more of a Polynesian, I mean, you could say, I don't know, man. I, they'll they'll build a, they'll build a hotel like that in Hawaii, right? They've got hotels that look like that in Hawaii. Yeah, like what's this thing? What's that hotel? <laughs> Where's that? I I mean I'm just trying to you know give an alternative perspective, devil's advocate, if you will. Not everything has to look like a tiki hut. Like I said, I'm probably more willing to be patient about this, but it's certainly. Right now, it looks like a prison, <laughs> but hopefully it'll at least look like that when they're done. And here's from the backside, actually. We got backside of Polynesian footage today from the monorail. I'm so grateful to Sean. I mean, he's really working. <laughs> he's, he's, he's taking ferries and, and monorails, getting on the ground, shooting footage from all over. Thank you very much, Sean, for this great footage. See, there, that's what people are used to with the Polynesian. They're used to that. With that, we'll go to the Magic Kingdom, catch up on what's happening at Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I'm not expecting to see a lot, actually. I feel like they're, they're, they're near the finish line. I do sense that, this, that we could be approaching a summer opening. Wouldn't that be something? A summer opening for Tiana's Bayou, or for, yeah, for Tiana's Bayou Adventure at Magic Kingdom. There was water testing. I don't know if you guys heard about that, but this area here, there was water testing. There's no water now. I think they were just checking water levels to see how much, you know, how the the new setup was holding water, if there was any leakages or any, you know, any loss of water somewhere. I don't know if they actually ran any boats down that track. I don't feel like that they're ready for that, but who knows. But yeah, so this this area has actually had water in it within the last week. Just look at the drop. I mean, this area has been kind of finished for a little while now. But the fact that they put those bottles up does suggest that they are getting near finished. This looks more lush than in the past, I think. I feel like the, the, they have added more vegetation to that mountain. It is looking more swampy, I guess is the right word that part of the mountain is. It's getting more and more swampy every week. This, by the way, is the rest of Frontierland. That, I think, is Pecos Bill, if I'm not mistaken. Could be, they're having a parade right now, but that could be the future home of a Tiana-themed restaurant. That's the discussion. That's the scuttlebutt. But they're leaving this side of the mountain as is, as it connects to the Frontierland part, or the more frontier -y <laughs> parts of Frontierland. 
And we'll wrap our Tiana's coverage with this ride on the train just to take a peek down at the queue to see how far that's coming along. Looks about as it did last week. With that, we're going to Epic Universe. This is exciting. We got some, we got some video courtesy of Peaceful Thrill Seeker on Twitter. Just short clips, but wonderful, just the same. Mount Beanpole. This is Super Nintendo World. That's Mount Beanpole. This part right here, that section, if I'm not mistaken, that's the Yoshi ride. This is the How to Train Your Dragon coaster, and I love the dragon elements that they've added to the track. This is Starfall Racers, which is part of Celestial Gardens, and that's the section of the park that cuts right down the middle. It runs, I think, from the entrance of the park all the way back towards the hotel. Another look at Mount Beanpole at Super Nintendo World. This is great. This is ride testing of the Curse of the Werewolf roller coaster. Look how far along they are. Look at that. So what you're looking at here is what they call a slingshot launch. The vehicles kind of rock back and forth on that section of the track, pick up speed, and then continue on through the track. And those vehicles look like they are rotating, oscillating on the track as well, kind of like Cosmic Rewind. And then finally, we actually have this. They're building a new DreamWorks land at Universal Studios Orlando and and I think that's Shrek's, you know, his swamp home. Right there, right? That's got to be Shrek's place. Right? Is that next to E.T.? Is that the E.T. show building? Oh, interesting. Now I know where this is. I, I've only been to Universal one time. I did go to E.T., but I remember it also being empty when we were there. Great stuff. Man, Orlando, Universal, busy. Go get it. So thanks again to Peaceful Thrill Seeker on Twitter. You can find him at P underscore T underscore S underscore 342. I'm hoping that we can get see some more footage from, from him. Oh, wait, we've got some photos too, don't we? Indeed, we've got three more photos from Epic Universe. That's the Stella Nova Resort. That's the Helios. That hotel is in the park. And I find that to be perhaps the most, and not just the front of the park, like at Disneyland Paris, where you know you cross that threshold at Paris and what you're crossing through is the hotel. This is at the back end of the park. You have to go through the entire park to reach this. If I have my observations correct from this concept art, right? There's the hotel. You gotta go all the way through the park to get there. That is the coolest thing ever in my opinion. As hotels go, there will not be a vacant room in that building for years if people find it as cool as I do. And then here's one more shot from Super Nintendo World, a kind of a cleaner, solid image of the Yoshi attraction. Those are little Yoshi vehicles. That's, that's basically their people mover, you guys. I mean, it's just through this one land, which is fine. They're getting a people mover at Epic Universe. Can, they, can we be more jealous? Can they give us more things to be jealous of? I hope you guys enjoyed this show today. Kind of a long one, <laughs> but it was great. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this show and want to show your support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash freshbaked. Then you can follow us on Instagram at underscore freshbaked, on Twitter at freshbakeddisney, that's fresh with no E, and on TikTok at freshbakeddisney. And until next time, thanks again for watching, everybody. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. And fresh baked.